Hey there, Movie Review Mom here to give you the scoop on a new movie called Late Bloomers. This quirky and charming film is now available on Amazon Prime. It's rated R. It's an hour and 29 minutes. And my overall Movie Review Mom grade is a B plus. But before I go into any details, let me explain how this review works. First, I'll give you an overview in a nutshell. Then I'll point out things I liked, things I didn't like, tips for parents, themes worth talking about, funny lines, interesting lines, and we'll finish up with other films that are sort of similar that you might also really like if you like this one. My goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can decide whether or not you want to spend time or money or both watching a particular film. So today, the featured product that is a companion to this film is Polish candy because this movie involves a Polish woman, which is hilarious. And so click on the link below. It's an Amazon link to this product that I found that is talked about in this movie as well. All right, so back to the movie. In a nutshell, Louise is an aimless 28-year-old Brooklynite. She lives in Brooklyn. She's recently single after a horrible breakup, and she's sort of a musician, and she's mostly depressed without admitting to it. She drunkenly falls while doing something really stupid and breaks her hip as this young woman. This lands her in a physical therapy ward full of people twice or three times her age. So there she meets Antonina, a cranky elderly Polish woman who speaks no English. Louise, through a series of events, reluctantly gets a job caring for Antonina. Neither woman loves the arrangement, but it's time to face the truth about aging. We all have to grow up sometime, even if you're a young woman, right? Or an older cranky woman. The film was directed by Lisa Steen and writing credits go to Anna Greenfield. Already, the film has been nominated for and won awards at several film festivals. So yay and kudos to the team. Quick tips for parents. I think kids are going to be bored. This is a movie about characters and their personal development. So there's lots of adults talking. There is some profanity, including F-bombs that you need to be aware of, especially if you think you want to watch this with your older kids. There are crude conversations and words. There is a lot of alcohol and some drunkenness that leads to bad behavior. And two unmarried singles try to have an intimate moment while talking about it. <laughs> some of the themes that were illustrated really well and are worth talking about if you watch this with other people are recovering from a breakup, friendship, service to others, focusing on others instead of your own problems, forgiveness, Healing, and in this movie, physical healing and emotional healing are illustrated very well, and family. All right, so here's the list of things that I really liked. And the more I think about the movie, I think the more I like the movie, if that makes sense. Now, I have been a fan of Karen Gillan ever since we all discovered her in the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise, which I love, by the way. She is fantastic in this movie. And we even get to hear her sing a little bit. Her voice is very sweet. And I had not seen her co-star, Margaret Sophie Stein, in anything before. But she gave a very believable and charming performance. I don't know if I'm going to use the word charming because her character is so cantankerous. But her performance is charming. And it allows the viewer to slowly fall in love with her just like Karen Gillan's character does. It was really nice to see Kevin Nealon in something again. I always loved him in Saturday Night Live and hadn't seen him in anything in quite a while. The movie features a Polish neighborhood in New York City. And of course, this main protagonist, well, the protagonist is Karen Gillan, but this other co-star is Polish. And we get to learn a little bit about her culture and some of the things that are important to her. There's a cute group of water aerobic ladies who support one another doing rehab after they've all had hip surgery. I used to teach water aerobics for 10 years and I loved it. It wasn't all old people with knee and hip surgeries 
although that definitely was a part of the the group of regulars. Uh, but it's great exercise. Did you know you can actually get 10 times the resistance in water than you can in air? Like if you, you know, just did that, it's so much more effective in the water. Anyway, I could talk all day long about that, but I won't. Now, one of the characters, Karen Gillen's mother, has early onset Alzheimer's, which is super sad. Uh, Talia Balsam, I thought, did a really good job capturing that blank stare that is often seen with those who have Alzheimer's. My mother struggled with Alzheimer's for about 10 years before she passed. And I'm so grateful that she had a long, happy, fulfilling, rich life before her disease started. In the movie, Karen Gillan's character sings to her mother, and it reminded me how powerful music was throughout my mother's entire life, but especially in the very end. She was a beautiful nightclub singer as a young woman before she married and started having me and my sisters. She sang to me all of my life and was in community musicals and stage productions. In the end, when she didn't really recognize any of us anymore, there was always a spark in her eyes when my sisters and I sang to her. And I think music is so powerful for anybody, but especially for Alzheimer's because it brings back so many strong memories and feelings. So that moment where Karen Gillan's character sang to her mother was really sweet and touching. Bring tissues, uh, you might actually shed a few tears. The film does a really lovely job showing that we all grow on our own timeline. Life is not a race. As long as we're learning and improving each day, even in small ways, that's success. And we see these late bloomers, both Karen Gillan's character who recognizes, she feels like she should be farther ahead in life, but also Antonina, an older woman who's been cranky her whole life, who starts to become more tender and soft. And I loved the old and new type of characters experiencing some of the same lessons in life. I really like the illustration of two women who were struggling physically after breaking their hips, but the biggest part of healing was their emotional journeys. Now with all of that praise makes me think I should change my grade and make it higher. Uh, But there were some things that I didn't like or just thought could have been done differently or better in in different ways. For example, even though it is a fictional story, I felt bad for all of the characters in the movie who were struggling so much in their lives, financially, physically, emotionally, socially, and so on. The movie itself is very slow moving and you have to really wait until act three to start to see some payoff. I would love to have had subtitles to know what some of the people were saying in Polish. The good news is that not knowing absolutely puts you in Karen Gillan's character's shoes because she doesn't know what they're saying either for the majority of the movie. it's I mean, she learns a a couple of words, but she really doesn't know what they're saying, but she learns to communicate with them in other ways and still build a relationship with them through service and love. And as we all know, love has no language, right? Now, whenever I watch movies, I write down funny lines and interesting lines simply to share them with you. So you get a taste for the dialogue and the script writing. And you can see all of them on my written review at moviereviewmom.com. So Louise is the name of the character played by Karen Gillan. And she says, she's trying to use her cell phone as a communicator to speak and then have it translate for her. And so she tells Antonina in English. And of course, Antonina doesn't know what she's saying, but we know what she's saying. And I thought it was so funny. She says, we're being run by big brother companies. We should use them if they're using us. And I thought, yeah, but what's a funny running gag throughout the entire film is she can never get her cell phone to translate. And so it's just useless and doesn't serve her at all. And then she's talking to another friend in act three. He has, it's a roommate and he's gone through a lot of changes himself and has learned and grown. And so he's telling her, wow, you know, you really inspired me with some of the things that you've done. And she says, wow, I've never inspired anyone ever except to change their phone number. And she has this real spunky, uh, sarcastic, 
crusty personality herself, which in many ways matches Antonina's. Um, but we see growth, obviously, in both characters. Now, there are some interesting lines that I wrote down as well. One is spoken by uh, Karen Gillan's character's mother when she was just a young girl and she's trying to learn how to play the guitar. And she says, oh, I suck. And then the mother says, everyone sucks in the beginning. The only difference is some people keep trying. And so she does. She keeps trying. And then she is able to play the guitar in the end. So Brooke is the name of the roommate. And he and Louise, played by Karen Gillan, um, they have a lot of really good heart-to-heart conversations. And so he asks her, do you want to live an unexamined life all your life? And it really gets her thinking. And that's why she starts making some of the changes that she does. She meets um, a, a guy in a bar and, you know, he's wondering, did she break her leg because she had a ski accident or, you know, something interesting like that. And she says, um, you know, having crutches makes you seem like you have a good story. A cane just seems like a tragedy you shouldn't ask about. And she says that because she's graduating from crutches to a cane, you know, as she's trying to go through this recovery. She absolutely recognizes she is experiencing something that none of her peers are experiencing because breaking your hip is what old people do, right? Um, Brick, her roommate, says another thing when he says sometimes the most hurtful things are the most truthful because some of their conversations are brutally honest. All right, I'll share two more lines because I think they're really good ones. Another line that Karen Gillan's character says is, a home is just a place to live. The life in it is what is counted. And that's a lesson that she slowly learns. And then also in act three, she says, I thought I knew things as she's learning so many more important things about life. And it's really fun to watch her discover those things. All right. So as I watched this movie, I instantly thought of three movies that I wanted to recommend to you that are sort of similar. The first one is called The Upside. Now, originally, that was a French film that was remade in America by Hollywood. And it's fantastic. It's also about an older person who needs uh, somebody to care for him physically. And so he gets, of all people, Kevin Hart, who I had only really seen do just ridiculous, raunchy comedies. And that was the first time that I was like, whoa, Kevin Hart can actually act. He plays a dramatic role, but he still has his fun personality. Um, and we learn life lessons as both of the two men learn life lessons. Really well done, great movie. And I've heard the French version is even better. I just haven't seen it. Another interesting movie is called A Good Person. And Karen Gillan's character in this movie is she she tr- tries so hard to become a good person as she tries to define that. Well, in the movie, A Good Person, it's a similar type of story where someone is trying to decide, you know, am I a good person? What does a good person do? And there are some really great wise older people that teach lessons and that kind of thing. And then another one is called Here Today, also where we've got an older person with a younger person, and they're both learning important life lessons. I highly recommend all of those. All right. If my reviews are helpful, give them a thumbs up, comment down below. Once you see the movie, let me know what you thought. And when you get a minute, run over to Instagram. You can find me there as Movie Review Mom, but you can also find me as my author name, Trina Boyce, where you can learn about my books, my products, my online courses, and my shenanigans. Have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.